So my, my point being is, if, if everybody has access to all the cards, if you were to enter a tournament, a large tournament, you'd have to assume to a certain degree that Cole is the kind of deck that would want to fight low to the ground. And it can also scale, because even if Cole's ability does nothing, you still have dice affordability to just be like, I can play big things in Cole decks. Like, I can play expensive things in Cole decks, because I really only need to play one or two cards from my hand a turn. And the I mean, rest of them can be worth three damage. You... I had to play very specific cards in this deck to do what I did. Sure. Like I'm not I'm like not taking anything away of, from the deck build. All of the cards in here are like two for ones, right? Sure. Like Um and I think I would cut Anchor Knot. I didn't like him very much. But uh I think Anchor Knot's just exactly the kind of thing you want to be doing because it just, means that it's one less card from Cole. It's, he it's, just sat in my hand so often. Like I would rather have it like yeah, he sat, gonna, but he sat in your hand because I you didn't need to you didn't need right, Anchor Knot to do one damage to this deck. Right. It felt like this was overkill because I had so many Correct. instances of this effect. But I wouldn't cut so it. So I would re replace it with something that's better because I can still pitch it to Cole if I need this particular effect. But I'm saying that because to, to get a one to get a body better. to get a body on board, right? I I'm saying that I would cut this from the deck. Like I, I just I think that would be a terrible mistake when you're talking about going up against something that might be taller. I definitely don't want a zero one that does one damage against a taller deck. Why? I He's just a chump blocker to your Phoenix Born. Because chump blockers are zero for ones, and that's bad for Cole. <laughs> like you're just like you're just discarding a card instead of doing something with that card. I I I guess I don't I don't agree because I I look at it and say okay, if you play Anchor Knot, Neil says it cuss during the play session. <laughs> I I try not to. Yeah. Uh, for the kids at home, I I do. What I'm saying is is that Anchor Knot is coal ability in baked into the card, and you get board presence, which is an advantage in this game. I don't care. Whether it's an O one or not, your opponent has to deal with I it. I mean, or you just I I really do think the O one is is like like I do think this is a great card. I don't think it's a great card in this deck. Okay, I don't agree. I, but I want like another one of these or another one of these. Sure, but that's just so you can recur swordsmen as I get killed, right? Well, it's just so I can put more cards in my hand. Like each one of these replaces itself. This is a minus one. Sure. Like, like but, I I did this to you. I just like played this guy and I. You know, I played some of these random one of ready spells that gets back once in a while. But mostly I played this guy, got a card back, and then I had more coal fuel. Sure. And uh, it's it has power and toughness to maintain a board state where, like, this is a zero one. And like we were talking about... But that costs three dice versus... But right. I guess, I be, again, I guess going back to three dice really means nothing in a coal deck because you aren't probably going to play your whole hand anyways. You're just not going to play the five card hand. You're going to play two cards from hand and use the coal ability three times. And that's what you did to me I every round. I think I played like four cards and still cold you three times. Like, Well, okay, so that's, I mean, that's like even more abusive right, when we but talk that's, about it. But the way you do that is by not playing cards like this and by playing cards like this. Okay, so so we're talking about 10% of the deck that could be even better. I, like, I agree, yeah. Okay. I, I mean, I think that I could make improvements on this deck. That's what I'm saying. But uh, in general, like... I played, most of what I played was one thing that costs three in a turn, and then other stuff, mm -hmm. right? Like, it was like one of this, one of this, and then, like, an expand energy, or one of the two cost guys. Oh, and this is this. And this card may be too cute. Oh, I think it had value. It healed. I mean, the turn that you played it on me, you actually... I would play it if it did play damage it. to myself. Sure. Like, it was just to draw two more cards. Right. I, I understand. put my guys in my hand. I understand what it does. I get I got what it does. It also had a position where I had worked down Essence Dura to a point where I was potentially able to do something to it, and it just... It just didn't matter. Like, like you just pulled Essence Dura back, and... Like... They were able to replay Essence Druid at full health again, and I had just lost all that energy and effort that I had put I in. I do think I cheated you a couple times in game one with the crickets, though. It only makes two crickets if you exhaust both spells, and okay. I don't think I did that a couple of the times. In the second game, I did it correct. Sure. I don't think it changes the outcome. Well, having, having an additional 2-1 that draws a card is, is something. Sure. Like, this card is absurd. 
This card is absolutely absurd. I, I think it's a great card. I think it's the kind of thing you want to be doing because the, I, I actually don't think that a 1-2 is favorable in this game any longer. Like, with the current combat rules, I think aggressive units with low defense are going to be your best shots. But I do think that, going back to my point, if I was entering a tournament tomorrow, I would never play a deck that was loaded with a bunch of one defense guys. Yeah, I don't think you should. I, I don't think there's but, any reason... But like, that eliminates, like, just so we're clear, that eliminates almost half of the allies and conjurations in the game. I mean, I would still play cards like this. Sure, sure, but I'm... I'm like, I'm, I would play Fire Archer, I would play... Well, Fire uh, Archer is, like, way less better now, because you can only shoot a Phoenix Born with it. Right, but but these are, like... Like, when you talk about one-toughness units, like, cards like this, or like this, that still do something, even if they get shot down, like... Yeah, I, I just don't... Um, I don't know how you fight... I don't know how you like, fight with anything. Like this. Like, this is a one-toughness unit that I'm very happy to play. Sure. It was way better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, they're really good. I mean, I played them, if you remember, I played them in that early yeah. uh, ally recursion deck. Um, you know, I think that's one of the things the Divine does really, really well, um, is is bringing allies back. Like, allies are never gone in Divine, yeah. which, which is something that you can't say is true for other... Well, factions with the exception of ceremonial. Yeah, maybe. allies are never gone in ceremonial, but uh, but but there are really good allies in ceremonial. I mean, I, I I mean, there's there's allies that do things on play, which makes them good. But with the changes to chant and some of that stuff, like I'm not sure that there's enough damage to keep up with. Like I think, I think chant is better than it was. No, it's way better than it was. No, yeah, absolutely. How? Because it you get a trigger for every guy that dies you didn't used to. Yeah, but it does. I mean, it's just a status token, right? And you can only remove one status token a turn. Whereas before, it was just like, but so before it was bursty, where like this guy died, you can do three. Sure. Now, but then, like, like this guy dies, I three you. This guy dies, I do nothing. Now, this guy dies, I have three saved up. This guy dies, I have six saved up. But it takes you six actions to remove that six sides. Like you're never gonna like it. It it's gonna get to a point where it's got a million status tokens on it. And you don't have enough time to remove it before the game's over. I think it's better than it was. I just, I'm, I mean, I'm, like you were talking about how good you think coal is. Like, I agree like, that chant is a chant. <laughs> version of coal. I don't disagree with that. Like, chant is an onboard version of coal, uh, but it's still limited. I mean, it's still limited by your action efficiency, and it's still limited by it's limited by the same action this is. Sure, I agree. I agree. And I did this a million times. Like, what you don't think Chant's going to go off a million times? No, because you only get one. Um, like, second copy of Chant and third copy of Chant basically mean nothing now. Like, in my opinion, they're well. They're, except that, except that, if you run it, a, it first copy of Chant is essentially the same as Coal, except that you've spent dice to play the guy. Correct. But it's one card. Second copy of Chant means every activation of of your Chant Coal is a half card. Third copy of Chant is every activation of a third of a card. Because you may run out of guys to play, but you would still have, like, more tokens. Because they, you get... I just don't, I mean... Because in if you have three chance to play, you play this guy, this is worth three damage over the course of three turns. If you have one chance to play, this is worth one damage over the course of one turn. Sure. So the additional ones do have value, assuming that, like... I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not to... And you also want to play more than one, probably, because, like... You want, like, even if you don't think three is, if you think three is too many, I think two is not too many, because just not enough guys die to power them up. And yeah. in order for you to draw the second one, you probably have to play three, just for consistency. And I think the third one is probably fine. Well, I mean, obviously, um, I just I just think that that ability feels really, really abusive. So, I mean, it's just, and, and it does, in my opinion, negate, a large percentage of the card pool. It has to. I mean, you're just never going to play a one defense guy anywhere. I mean, I, I described to you how I consider one defense guys to begin with, where I would play guys like this or Fire Archer or this that do something else. But I'm not going to play like a random three well, but, one but, for, okay, so the, that's the only wolf, a guy. The wolf does something else based on its ability to, to summon on the side. Right, like it's you summon it from the side, and you could main attack the same turn you summon them. That's sure. doing something, right? Would you agree? Okay, I mean it's 
I would say it being a summon is doing something because the second one is like a two for one, right? Like, like the first one you spent one card to make, the second one you get for free. Like you've made two cards for the price of one in your pile. Um, well, that's not true. You have to still play second spell. You still have I, to spend. I mean, like, like just like bear. I have one copy of bear. Yeah. I make one bear with it. It's a one for one. Right. Next round, I make second bear. It's a two for one. Sure. Like. I book like that's how I look at all books, right? Mm -hmm. Like it's essentially two men. Like it's it may be three men depending on how the game goes. Mm -hmm. Um, and and you're right. The the wolves give like a small amount of extra value because uh, if you pay the expensive cost, you can like f take the time out of the equation. Mm -hmm. Um, but like I mean, this card is just like that only way better <laughs> like oh, I, I i don't disagree that that the night song cricket is going to be because it is also a 2-1 but it's got a bunch of text on it and you can make them two at a time for an action like yeah i mean i i don't know i guess like i said i'm just i'm just um i'm just trying to figure out like the direction you would go where you would ever I mean, like, where you would ever play anything that's not three defensive plus. Like, you're going to have to, right? Right. I mean, that's that's fairly similar to how the game was in 1.0, because the game was rampant with Frostback Bears and Hammer Knights. Sure. And 5-3 uh, that you can't target. Sure. But like, I this mean, deck would have a horrible time with that guy. But he doesn't exist like that anymore. I think it would still have a horrible time with a 3-3 three, three that can't be targeted. He's, he's not. He's a, I think he's like a 2-3. Right, he, I'm pretty he's, sure he's a three three now. Holy night! Yeah. I'm pretty sure he's lower than that. Like hey, he ten dollars, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> ten dollars on he's a three three two. Okay, but it, he can be targeted now, right? No, he still has magic armor. No, he had a different ability. This unit cannot be targeted by spells and opponent controls. Right. So I guess you can still you can ping still him. ping him. But it has three toughness, <laughs> which I think is literally worthless. I mean, like, I like, think I think three toughness is not tall enough to fight Cole. Then you should quit playing Ashes. No, because I think that, that you're I'm like. Just, I just think it's going to be overreacting to losing to Cole tonight. I just I don't because when so to understand the commitment to Bear, like Bear costs you three to play Bear, right? Because it costs you a power die to put the spell book in play. It costs you two dice to play the bear. So first bear costs you three. So I've spent three dice and to make a bear. Right? The second you ping bear for one, if I let bear sit and not attack that next turn, you get to ping him again for two. And if I don't use him on the last turn, then I just spent three dice to do literally zero in the game. Right. But if you do make me ping him twice and use him, then you've gotten your use out of him and made me discard two cards. Like, Which I just don't think Cole cares about. I just don't. This think... deck doesn't because it's all draw cards. But, but like you have to take into account that like there are things that you could be doing. Like, well, I don't. I uh, if you're not playing an efficiency version of Cole I, that's drawing cards, you're probably not playing him correctly. Wouldn't you agree? That's got to be a lesser, a, a less impactful version of Cole. I mean, I I think that if all you're trying to do is his ability, then then this is close to what you want to be doing. I think that like there's a lot like. I think it's really hard to just blanket say that this is too good or that you shouldn't do this because of this when we've only played 30% of all Phoenix Borns ever. And Well, that's not true. We've played more than that now. I have played Cole, Jericho, uh, Simbali. Ramia. I didn't play Ramia. You played Ramia. Xander. I played Xander. I played Xander as well. Um, we played um, uh, Noah. Brennan. Noah, Brennan, and I played Aridel. Leo, you played Leo, Aridel. Okay, so we're at half. Um, uh, I played Vicky. Yeah, I think we're over half. Well, we've named ten. How many are there? Twenty-one. I don't think there's that many, is there? Here, you got a book there over there with them. <laughs> I don't think there's I mean, that many. Maybe I'm wrong, but I mean, one, the only one we haven't—you can two, count the ones three, we haven't played four, would probably be the closest. Uh, Echo, Five. we haven't played Echo. Oh, you want to count the ones we haven't played? Yeah, so Astra is one. one. Did you play I played Yep. One, two, three, four, five, 
six, seven. I've played Jessa, so we can count it. I just haven't played it on stream. Okay. Seven. Mm-hmm. Oh, I forgot we played Lulu. Mm-hmm. Eight. Mm-hmm. Nine, ten. 11, 12. I play Soraya. I play Soraya, remember? Cause... Okay. So we've played exactly half. Yeah. Um, so playing exactly half of all Phoenix forms, not counting ones that have been reprinted in 1.5, like, I think it's really hard to just, like, make blanket statements like that. I mean, I, I told you, I warned you going into the night that like, I was going to play Cole, and you shouldn't play one toughness creatures. Sure, I, I, but at the same time, like, that's the kind of thing that you should see to understand why you shouldn't, right? Like, I mean, in theory, if, if it was, if we were really talking about, like, and, and like I said, maybe Noah's just not good, but at the end of the day, like, well, you I don't should think it has able, anything to do with Noah. Well, you should be able to, like, overpower Cole's ability. Wouldn't you agree if you have a spell board of seven that if you could somehow get to, to the ability of playing significant threats, which we all know that in order to fill seven, you're not going to be able to fill seven with three cost guys, right? Well, Would we agree I mean, with that? I don't. I think you beat Cole by like going tall. Okay. Not wide. So then, so again, my my point being is. In what environment does going wide win? And what environment of this card pool would going wide win? I don't think going wide wins in Ashes. Right. So why... I don't think that's a problem with the game either. Okay. I mean, I'm, like, I'm not <laughs> I'm not arguing whether it is or isn't. I'm just the, asking, like, from a perspective of understanding the game, then if that's really the case, then large battlefields are, are literally meaningless. Not literally meaningless. There will be decks that what leverage them by, like... Like, Ceremonial wants to have a bunch of little crappers, right? Like... Like, I think that they do, because they want to charge up their, like, random kill your stuff stuff. I just don't see how Ceremonial wins anymore when it doesn't have direct unit control. Like, it no longer has direct access to unit control. What do you mean? Like, none of the abilities hit units. Chant hits units, doesn't it? I don't... Maybe it does. Chant I mean, might. I think Chant is insane, by the way. I, I think you're being down on Chant is, like, not... I don't think correct. Chant is as good as it used to be, and that's... I think it's, it's way better. I think it's fine. I think it's fine that it's not as good as it used to be because obviously ceremonial was very strong in 1.0. I think it's yeah, way, way bad. better. After an ally you control is destroyed, put a status token here. Uh, it deals it to Phoenix Borns. Does not deal to units. The so old one used to go to units. Didn't you it? could hit anything. Okay. Yeah. Then this one's worse because it can't go to units. But I, I, all all of the ceremonial stuff got changed from being able to deal with direct unit control. Like you now have to play allies that somehow deal with units in ceremonial. And I don't think, in my opinion, there's very many allies that are good at that. Maybe the the fallen, the shadows, shadow. Guy, um, I'll look. I can't remember what he's called. <sighs> False Demon, who's a 2-2. Uh, and when it comes into play, you may deal one unit to target exhausted unit. Like, maybe that's good enough in Ceremonial? I mean, the way that you deal with units in Ceremonial is you, like, trade your 2-2s for their guys and then get your guys back. Like, But, but there aren't 2-2s in Ceremonial. There just aren't. Like I mean, vampire is really good, isn't it? The three four, it it like got. I mean, blood it archer, I guess, is a three three. It's like a three two, crimson bomber. I don't think changed, so it's a three two. So I guess, but I mean, again, very expensive two and three, respectfully. I mean, Hammer knight is still good. It's ceremonial, isn't it? Ceremonial nature. Nature, yeah, it's a three four. It it's essentially very similar to the sonic swordsman in terms of its ability. Right. Um, I mean, I. I think that like a lot of those guys are the the Hammer Knight or uh, the Vampire. I mean, Grave Knight's going to change. We have no idea what it's going to change to, but Battle Advantage is going away. Yeah. Um, Fire Archer in its new form is just a, a straight nerf it's across worse the board. Than it was. Yes, it's still playable. I, I'm not disagreeing with playability. I'm just talking about like if you're playing Ceremonial and not playing Fire Archer, you're probably still screwing up. But 
Uh, Blood Shaman at O2 is just doing nothing for you. Um, you know, like dice manipulation and medi free meditate off death is not worth the cost of admission there. Um, you know, Pain Link maybe is okay as a side where you can move, uh, you know, move wound, one wound token from this unit onto a target Phoenix Born. Well, maybe. If you want to explore Ceremonial, then maybe that's something we should do next week. Well, I, I, I will definitely. I mean, I, we had had, um, I, I ran a poll on Twitter this week, and basically on the Twitter poll, they, uh, uh, they wanted to see Illusion, Ceremonial, and Divine were the, the top three. So we covered two of the three. Um, I, I don't disagree with you on Vampire, but again, I don't think you're going to be able to necessarily afford to actively play um, many three-cost allies. I mean, if the last game showed you anything, I only ever played one a turn. Correct. Uh, so, like, playing one of the three fours plus some additional pressure, I think, is good enough. Maybe. Um, but, I mean, the, if you really think about that, you have seven dice for four cards, so at the best, you'd have to have all one-cost cards from that point on. I mean, more or less. I mean, I didn't play a recard in my hand a lot of the time. I was left over with two or three cards in hand at the end of the turn. But you also drew like six or seven cards, so that right. makes a lot more sense for for that per, from that perspective. So, I mean, you. My, my, I, I don't know that your goal needs to be deploy your entire hand. Well, I, I think you should be. I mean, if you're trying to be as efficient as possible. Right, then you know that five cards should be worth two mana per five Chris, cards. This game, uh, I'll tell you about it sometime when we're offline, Chris, because you might like it. Um, it is. It was printed a long time ago as 1.0, and then Ashes Reborn was like crowdfunded recently. It's going to come out next month right. as a new base set. Um, it's replacing 1.0 cards that they felt were mis were out of balance. Right. So we have like a bunch of proxies. Like my my guy was playing is like, like here's the old card from 1.0, and then we printed out a copy of the new one that they spoiled, because um, this will be printed as a real card next month in the Reborn reboot. Um, and if you're interested, like it is a game that I think is very fun, and one that, since you... Uh... Yeah, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, um, it's a game that's really fun, and because it comes in... Like, all together, it's very affordable. You just, like, get everything that you need uh, in one box. Uh, Brzee actually had the 1.0 box for this from a long time ago. I found it in my basement. Hmm. <laughs> um, you know, so, I, again, end, end of the day, like, I, I think that ceremonial, ceremonial power, dice power is powerful, but that's going to cost you a dice to use it, right? Like, so... Sure. Um, before he succumbed. <laughs> yeah. He's supposed uh, to watch my streams. <laughs> He's too busy with his, like, pregnant girlfriend and, you know, you know doing real life stuff, less, not, <laughs> so, not be in my room anymore. So a couple of things for people that are watching, just so you know, there won't be a stream next Thursday. Um, what? Yeah, I'm having a baby on Thursday next week. Oh, right. <laughs> you know, that, that whole thing. Right. I'm, I'm going to have a stream without you. <laughs> yeah, okay, you can have a stream without me. I mean, we could we can try to squeeze a stream in somewhere else, but I think that's going to be really difficult. Yeah. Um, you really, you, you need to be more considerate with your timing of your child. <laughs> I'm sorry about that. Uh, you're welcome. <laughs> I, I did it all for you, man. <laughs> I, I planned my child's birth over that. Um I just, I think that, um, obviously, I think we should keep that deck together. Um, I don't think we should tear it down. I'm going to take the anchor outside of it, though. That's fine. You can make it better. I don't care yeah. if you want to make it better. Um, I think that we should talk about the kind of deck that could fight it and see if it actually can. Because I, I have a feeling that it's going to be tough. Um, right. I think this deck is good. Like... Like all card games. Shuffle bus uh, moderator in the future equals true side. Yeah, yeah. I mean, when, we might need a moderator. We mods, never... <laughs> I'll, I'll promote you, Chris. <laughs> We're not there yet. We we have uh, a few more steps to make to get to affiliate. We're getting close, though, because we get a lot of people watching, which we appreciate. Um, but it, so, it has taken me a few weeks to figure out how to win this game by drawing cards, and I finally did. Because uh, you know Cole, that's what I love to do. Cole, Cole is definitely the way you do that. So... But we will be back um, 
we'll spend some more time with Ashes sometime soon. I'm, I'm hoping maybe... So depending on how things work out, we'll figure out if I can get a bonus stream in because it's going to depend... Um, just call it man cave time. Yeah, that, that's a good that's a good response. Um, <laughs> it, it's going to depend on when she gets out of the hospital and COVID. And, yeah. and we'll when figure I something can, out. Yeah. If, uh, we'll figure something out. Yep, we will. So we have, we definitely will be back next Wednesday unless the baby comes early. And then just watch our Twitter account because I'll post to Twitter that there's not going to be a stream if it comes early. Um, but otherwise, plan on seeing us on Wednesday night. And then um, we will be releasing some videos to YouTube this week discussing some of the stuff. Uh, appreciate everybody that sat through me talking about Cole, but I, I still feel pretty strongly about him right now. Um, thanks. I appreciate that. Uh, this will be number three. So it's... it's uh, not a new but, hat, but it's still kind of a new hat because I didn't have a baby on my other two. They were I'm, I'm a stepdad to those two, so yeah, it's, it's um, your first biological yep, child. Yep, yep. But so. you are a wonderful father to uh, <laughs> to the well, girls. They're kind, mighty kind. Yeah. So we will be back. We will see what we can put together, and I will be thinking about nature as we move forward because it feels like nature got hit pretty hard in this in this iteration. Yeah, I mean, Frostback Bear and, and Hammer Knight are still good, I think. Well, I, Hammer Knight. I think is good. I'm not concerned. I don't think Frostback is. So, um, this won't be the most trouble guaranteed. I, I, I definitely, I, I am without a doubt certain of that. And I'm fairly certain that I'm going to have a girl, uh, which, cause I just don't think I'll have, feminine. I just don't think I'm going to have a shot at a boy. <laughs> I just think that's the way my, my life is meant. If there's a higher being that says, um, you know, you're going to have things and you're going to pay for your sins of the past. And I'm destined to have girls <laughs> so, it's just, is what it is. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> this it's, is getting weird. It, it is what it is, man. That's just the way it goes. So, um, but thanks, yeah, we thanks will figure everyone. It out. Thank um, you. This has been another great stream. We the last this week streams have just tripled our viewership. Yep. So, and we've had a lot. Thanks of, everybody. We have a lot more fun talking to you guys than the only ones talking thanks, amongst ourselves. Thanks so. to my friends who are who are watching because they love me. I love you too. Yep. More thanks to people who are watching because they want our content because you're our future. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> are you, your friends are not our future? Nah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Well, we'll see everybody soon. Take care. Good night.